let's get back in it. So, nowhere to go but forward. Clive, you're back. I am. And with glad tidings for once. Hugo Kupka is no more. Well, I'll be. All of our comrades who lost their lives back at Sid's place be smiling down at you right now. We had a stolas from Lubor saying Drake's fang had fallen. I expect that was your doing as well, was it? It's... It's a long story. One for the history books, I'll bet. Welcome home, Clive. It's good to be back. You look better. I feel it. Which means I'm coming on your next little adventure. You're not leaving me behind again. Wouldn't dream of it. Otto. Any uh, word on the royalist movement since I've been away? Shouldn't you be putting your feet up? <sighs> if you really want to know, go and have a word with Vivian. Thank you. I will. See you, Darth. What do think about Titan? It was good. Um, I had said when we did the original Titan fight that it was a bit like, I don't want to say worse, but it wasn't as exciting as the Benedicta fight because the Benedicta fight had like the regular fight and then the semi-prime fight and the prime fight and the Titan fight was just kind of like fighting him at semi-prime and then that was it. But this kind of made up for it because now we got the big prime fight and it was like a giant crazy spectacle. Um, the actual mechanics of the fight were fine, but mostly it was just a spectacle, but it was a very fun spectacle. I enjoyed. Uh, but the scene afterwards, that's... Ooh, got me real excited. Conquering hero returns, and with hardly a scratch on him. I may have picked up one or two. <laughs> well, the fact that you came straight to me instead of visiting our resident physica suggests that you picked up something more important. A scent. The scent of Waluda's. The very same. But whatever plans Kupka was hatching with the royalists, he took them to his grave. As did his men, slaughtered by the orcs who'd taken over the fang. Orcs, Vivian. I've never seen such creatures in storm before. The Waluders must have ferried them over from Ash, but why? Why work to rescue Kupka only to invade his home, the mother crystal of an allied nation, and let both fall? It makes no sense. Do you know the tale of the blind men and the Adamantus? One can often be led astray by focusing too closely on individual details. One must instead see the bigger picture. And what bigger picture is there than my map? Yo, thanks, Steel Toes. Appreciate it, man. The kingdom of Walud claims dominion over all of Ash. It is a nation forged by the bloody conquest of Barnabas Tharm, the dominant of Odin, the Canvarian War of Independence in 849, the Battle of the Twin Realms in 865, the Battle of Belinus Tor in 873. Wheresoever his armies fought, Odin was found where the fighting was fiercest. But of late, the warrior king appears to have laid his sword to rest. Battle rages for control of the crystalline dominion. Yet Tharm sends not a single ship in support of his Dalmechian allies. Meanwhile, the blight ravages great swathes of ash. Yet warlike Walud shows not the faintest interest in laying claim to untouched lands. So why go to the trouble of sending an army of orcs into the heart of Drake's Fang? Only to make no attempt to claim the Mother Crystal for Walud. 
It can hardly be for lack of men. Tharm's armies rival any in the Twins. No. We have not seen the last of the Waluda standard. Odin will ride again. It is but a question of when. And on that day, who will be trampled underfoot? Didn't we say that Odin's horse only had four legs, or was that something else? Oh, that was that was Final Fantasy XIII. <laughs> we're playing XIII at the same time we're playing this. Yeah, and XIII only really had four legs for some reason. Because I the flag, the standard, shows six legs. So I was like, wait, why does the flag show six if the horse only has four? But that was thirteen. Yikes on thirteen. In summary, I know not to what end the royalists betrayed Kukka. I know only that it is part of some broader scheme. A scheme tied to the ambitions of one man. King Barnabas. Because he knows. There is no need to wallow in confusion. He knows the secret. If one is to cure a sickness, one must first identify the symptoms. And your lord uncle has volunteered to do just that by keeping an eye on the royalists' movements. <laughs> He's really throwing himself into this. <laughs> Indeed he is. Which means all that remains for us to do is await his reports. Well, not quite all in your case. The people of the hideaway must hear the news. Justice has been done. Hugo Kupka is dead. The wounds he left that night are still raw. Especially for those who lived with Sid the longest. Tell them that those wounds might finally begin to heal. Consider it the price of today's instruction. I've never known you to be sentimental. <laughs> what can I say? I am only human. And we are, all of us, sentimental animals at heart. I suppose we are. Very well. I'll go and spread the word. This is exciting. Get to tell everyone the good news. That's a fun quest. Ah, my favorite. Part. Um, there was something I wanted to look at. Of course. I forget who it was. Yeah. So, man, dude, I am like, I don't, I don't want to say too much yet because we still have a lot of the game to play. But I'm telling you, this game is a masterclass when it comes to character development. And not just character development, but like how to write characters in a way where they stay interesting through the entire game. You know, it's not just at the beginning of the game, Benedicta was an interesting character and the, or Benedicta was an interesting character and then she died. And then this part of the game, Titan was interesting and then he died. And this part, Odin is interesting, and he died. They're always... Every single character has, like, a part in the story that's developing throughout. So, like, we have the king, Odin, who we saw at the beginning. So he's always been, like, this big question mark. Now, not only do we know why he didn't help uh, the Dalmechian guys... But now we know that he knows the truth behind Clive, too. So that's like an extra twist that we didn't know before. Then we find out that the Lord Commander is like literally Ultima's secondhand man or something. So there's something crazy going on here. Then on top of that, we have Dion, who's being set up as a character that's going to mean a ton. And then as that's happening, the Emperor gives up his throne for the creepy doll person. <laughs> and this entire time, the Empress is being, you know, developed and we're just learning more and more about how evil she is. We have no idea what happened here with Olivier, Olivier. Then we have Joshua, who's just like the most interesting character ever. Who continues to develop and now he's talking to Dion. It's just like, man, there's so many characters that I am so interested in. And then Jill as well, who continues to develop, but just think about all the characters right now that are like 
in a super interesting time in their arc. Barnabas, Harbard, Dion, Sylvester, Olivier, Annabella, Joshua, the girl who we we know her name. I, oh yeah, Yote. Yote. And Clive. And Uncle. Like, and Ultima. They're all, like, in the story. They're not just chilling. You know, like, we're not just waiting for them to be important. Like, they're constantly important. Constantly big twists are happening with, like, every character. And then we have the medicine girl. What does she be? <laughs> Who could she be? So it's just like awesome how I am so interested in every character. Study it just makes well. me so excited to continue playing because I gotta know what happens with all these characters. So many moving parts, yeah. It's just fascinating. I love it. Thus ends today's lesson. I thought there was something I wanted to look at, but now I forget what it was. Um, I was going to look at Odin's second-hand man, but then we had that one cutscene and now I know who he is. Dude, it would be incredibly difficult to do like a character tier list. Just because they're all interesting in their own ways. All have their own things going on. Hi, Joe. It's good to have you back. I was worried. They all have their time in the spotlight, but not in a way where it's just like, okay, this character and then this character and then this character, but like Takedown said, it's all constant moving parts. You never know what's going to happen next. As soon as one thing happens and you think, oh, that's the big thing happening right now, then Joshua walks into Odin to Dion's room and you're like, what? It just... <laughs> I mean, that wasn't really a what moment because we knew he was going there, but still, like, the timing is just so good. You're never left, like, bored. You're never left, like, hmm, there's nothing really going on right now. Like, there's always someone doing something interesting. Somebody is developing. Just awesome. Well, someone looks pleased with himself. It's true what I'm hearing, then. Nothing escapes you, Lady Karen. It's true. Kuka is dead. Hmm. No more looking over our shoulders, then. Good. I'm starting to get a crick in my neck. <laughs> Don't let it go to your head, though. Just as I expected her to act. Also, new item. And what can I do for you? Oh my god. Hold the phone. Somebody call the police. A weapon with more damage but less stagger? What? <laughs> this is so, like, bittersweet, because the fact that they're willing to do this but didn't do it till now just blows my mind. Like, why... If you were willing to do this, why only now? Why only 30 hours in? Why not the whole game? Also, it's such a small number that... <laughs> Wow, five extra damage. At least it's something, though. We can say they Come again. at least oh, don't. thought about it. <laughs> Maybe it was just a typo. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, not only is it too little too late, but like... Well, that's exactly what it is. It's too little too late. Come seeking the gift of knowledge? I am come to give you knowledge. To share mine, actually. Hugo Cooker is dead. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Can it really be true? <laughs> Look, he's crying. <laughs> he is. <laughs> Big baby. <laughs> and with good reason, children. These are tears of joy, 
we must offer up a prayer to your parents that the heavens might weep with us. There shall be no lessons today, only thanksgiving and merrymaking. Go, put away your things. All right. Brilliant. They're like... <laughs> a new dawn has broken. It does. Thank you, Clive. I cannot wait to share the good news. Hippocrates. After Kuka fell, Ultima came to me. I need to know what he is. Have you learned anything? Alas, no. And not for want of trying. I have scoured nigh every historical tome in our collection and found nothing. Not even the sort of conspicuous absence that might suggest a concealment of fact. One is almost tempted to conclude that such a creature never existed. But I saw him with my own eyes. I don't doubt that you did. Alas, it seems you are the only one who has. To others, he reveals naught. We see only that which he leaves in his wake, like some terrible force of nature beyond the ken of mortal man. A bringer of death. Whether the Ultima you met with was the being itself, or merely another projection of its power, I know not. But until I do, my investigations shall continue. Thank you. It means a lot. I was going to say that the kids were making fun of him for crying. It immediately is like, no lessons today. And they're like, all right. Like, wait, <laughs> I have way to take their mind off it. If you would like to see them. If you want a kid to be on your side, just tell them they don't have to go to school. What subject shall Easy victory. Today? Learn everything you needed. You betcha. <laughs> you <laughs> made Mocking cry. Tears of joy. Blackthorn. Do you have a moment? What is it? I'm busy. I wanted to tell you that Hugo Cooper is dead. anything else for me. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's five true. years. Exactly five years. We're seeing troops in our Wait. border crossing. Well, no surprises there. to check the blacksmith because I betcha that orichalcum can go to something now what's that for you dear? Uh, nope but the earth and fury can so I can make an enhancer instead of buying one and it doesn't lose the stagger damage. No scratches, right? You can thank me later. Right, there we go. And... 
Looks pretty cool. Let's get in the light. Looks pretty neat. Is that the Yoshiyuki? No, it's the Enhanced Sword. It's called the Enhancer. It must be the Enhanced Sword. You barely sat down since you came home. Even got you running errands or something. Just spreading the word. So, the professor's got a soft side, has she? I'd never have guessed. No. She was right, though. Everyone was glad to hear the news. Ah, oh, but you ain't told everyone. I can think of plenty of friends back at the old hideaway who'd sleep more peacefully for knowing. Not least of all Sid. You should tell him. Hmm. You're right. I should. And I will. Well, when you do, be sure to take Mid with you. She's been going at it hammer and tong down in that workshop of hers, trying to do her father proud. But I can't remember the last time she visited the old salt's grave. Very well. I'll suggest it. All oh, right. Gotta go this way. What this? Fancy a look at the list, do you? Here you go. Use your loaf. <laughs> Guess we'll go ahead and do these. I hope use your loaf is another DoorDash quest. Good day to you. One could only hope. Ah, Clive. Your timing is exquisite, as always. I have a concern which you may be able to assist me with. Go on. There are whisperings afoot of shadowy figures having been sighted outside the village. Aliens. Rustlings in the undergrowth. Suspicious noises. My people fear that they are being watched. It may be no more than a surfeit of nerves, understandable in the current climate, or it may be the prelude to something altogether more dangerous. Given what I hope you'll forgive me calling your nose for trouble, I wondered if you might investigate. Of course. Excellent. You might begin by speaking with the good citizens of Lost Wing. Listen to their tales and make what you will of them. All right. I will. Cowboys and aliens. Right. Let's see what the people of the village have to say. I'd better find out if this is just nerves or something we need to take more seriously. Hello, have you seen any aliens lately? You alright, Sid? Something on your mind? There is actually. Can I ask you something? Quentin tells me people have mentioned shadowy figures out in the woods. Have you noticed anything unusual? Oh, that. No, sorry, can't help you. I heard the rumors, mind, from the lads working over at the vineyard, but none of them have seen anything either. Alright. Thanks anyway. Wow. Huge revelations. <sighs> the crystals we get from the tailor all but work. 
Do you have a moment? Yeah, I'm just sweeping the grass here. Woods. Have you seen anything out of the ordinary? No, but I've heard something. Sound of scraping metal, like someone sharpening a sword. Where was this? In Lorbert's Pass. Was out foraging for herbs when I heard it. Screeching out from between the trees. Ran back here as quick as my legs would carry me. And I ain't been back since. I see. I'll look into it. Thank you. Let's go and kick in. Let's go and Kano. Lorbert's Pass is our best bet then. What do you say, Togo? Shall we go and invest? Oh, I don't even have to talk to that other person now. I'm enjoying it a lot. <laughs> yeah, I feel it, Kano. That's why I'm very fortunate, very appreciative that I have enough support to where I can do both. People here. Talk in this game. What the hell are you doing here? <laughs> what is it to you? What could we give a damn? All that matters to us is that you don't leave here alive. F, they found us. This is so nonchalant. I love that you can kind of line enemies up with that. I think you're going. at him after I killed him. It's like, and stay down. Why were they here? Were they planning an attack on Lost Wing? I need... War Quentin. I can choke about here? Nice. Come on. Fly, Ambrosia. Eep-bib-dee-bee-dee-boo. And that's it for the trip. With how small the areas are in this game, I really kind of doubt uh, the Chocobo is going to be very useful, except in the really big areas like the desert. the hunt for our sinister figures? I found some black shields hiding near Lorbert's Pass. They're gone now. Black shields. The Empress's former bloodhounds. I may have murdered them. Though they serve another master now. One who means to root out and destroy both me and those I care for. And it would appear the pack has finally caught the scent of its prey. Damn it all. I had hoped I would have more time than this. More time to prepare. But if we are cornered, we have no choice but to bite back. And bite back we shall. I'm sorry. You're going to need to explain. <laughs> Who did the Black Shield serve now? And why would that person want you dead? 
because I want him dead. Who? The former Lord Chief Justice of Sanbrac. All that I have built here is for him. I don't understand. Why him? Why Lostwing? <sighs> I suppose it is better that you know the truth. I was a member of the judiciary once. So sickened was I by the injustice of this world, I swore to fight it. And fight it I did in my own small way. I saw more than a few corrupt officials condemned to the very cells into which they had thrown blameless innocence. Men to whom the law was but a scourge to turn against the powerless. And throughout, it was the Lord Chief Justice who backed me, who was my one true ally in the quest to see justice done. So what changed? I discovered that he hunted bearers for sport. I was a fool to think he shared my hatred of venality and vice. His support for me was no more than a facade, a means of ridding himself of his rivals, a mask to hide the rot beneath. I filed suit against him immediately. His response, however, was rather more visceral. He had my entire family slaughtered. And he faced no punishment whatsoever. That's a reasonable response. Everything. My loved ones. My livelihood. My position. The faith I had once held that any modicum of justice might be achieved through the courts. So I set about enacting my own. I tracked down every soul who served him. And slit their throats myself. But the man himself proved an altogether more difficult target. With money and power come protection. And so I saw that I would need an army of my own. He is kind of terrifying in that light. <laughs> I came here to Lostwing and began recruiting like-minded individuals. And everyone here knows this is why you do what you do. Of course. They too have lost loved ones to the bearer hunts. Seen faultless friends sent to the gallows to spare the guilty. All under the watchful eye of the Lord Chief Justice. Our wounds are the same. And our cause is the same. We are comrades. And our revenge is already in motion. We know where he hides, how numerous and well-trained his guard. What we did not know until now, however, was that his plans may already be in motion too. Quinton. Our time is short. He may move against us at any moment, unless we move against him first. My friends and comrades, it begins. Make ready for war. We just started a war. Excellent. There's something so funny about, like, stereotypical NPC guy. But, like... The light was hitting his face just right, and he had like this dark demeanor, and he's like, I slit all their throats. <laughs> and it's like some stereotypical NPC dude. That was great. Really cool side quest, though. I need to catch up on chat. Um, have I done a video on Final Fantasy VIII on how to get overpowered early? No, but we did that entire playthrough that Zach linked you. The Let's Break Final Fantasy VIII playthrough. So that's where I would start. Um, Retro also said that the game play loop it begins to be repetitive. Yeah, that's just kind of the way all action games are. Like that that's not I wouldn't count that as like a negative for this game. It's just the way games like this are. Like you you get most of the mechanics within the first 60% of the game, and then the rest of the game is just doing that over and over again. Getting better at it, learning more timings, trying new combos, etc. So I wouldn't necessarily like call that a negative, just more of akin to action games. That's just kind of the way it goes. Um, but yeah, I mean, at this point, we've pretty much got everything we're going to get, and we're just kind of trying everything with everything or just learning how to use them better 
Having said that, there's still more abilities we're going to get in the future. I think one really nice thing about this game is they're holding out on like the final couple of things because we still have more icons to get, obviously, looking at the ability board. So it definitely feels like we're not going to actually have everything until the end. Um, but you know what I mean? Even if we get more abilities later, they're all still going to be the similar. It either does damage or it does stagger and dodge the moves and then use your abilities like the general mechanics are going to be the same from now until the rest of the game like the last big mechanic we got was the limit bar pretty much and like also the prime fights but yeah that's just kind of the way these games go you know you you learn most everything within the first half of the game and then just rinse and repeat for the rest of the game um but yeah i could you know and especially like the side quests and stuff. They have not changed since the beginning of the game. They're still just fetch quests, so I can see it feeling repetitive. For me, I'm still having fun with all of it because I like the writing. The writing is definitely getting me through it. I'm still enjoying the gameplay too, but even if I was even if the gameplay was starting to feel stale to me. The writing is good enough to keep me interested. I mean, I am like, I am on edge. I need to know what happens with like nine different characters right now. <laughs> the characters that got me hooked like hardcore. Like I really want to know what happens with Joshua. I really want to know what happens with Odin or Dion. Really want to know why Odin knows Mythos. Really want to know what happens with his secondhand man. Want to know who Ultima truly is. Want to know what happens with Jill. Like, I am really, really into the characters. So I think at this point, the combat could be the most boring thing ever, and I would still be super interested in continuing. But uh, no, I'm still very much enjoying the combat. Even just having the Titan stuff now has me trying new things in fights, so. And the hunt system has kept me really interested as well because we're finally starting to get some difficult hunts. But I completely understand if you're not someone that plays a lot of action games like this and then you play this, I could totally understand the gameplay loop starting to feel repetitive because it is. That's just the way these games go. The finest fabric. The most fragrant herbs in Stop telling me about going flat. Gone just like that. And without so much as a buy your leave. What's the matter? Uh, oh, it, it's my apprentice. He up and vanished while my back was turned. I'd go and look for him myself, but I've got a bakery to run. A bakery that's now short, one pair of hands. Loath though I am to rely on the kindness of strangers, I'm at a loss. Please, will you see if you can find him? I'll see what I can do. Do you know where he might have gone? Ah, I wouldn't be surprised if he was off somewhere mooning at Drake's Fang. He used to work there, you see. Poor fool left his heart in its hollow. All right. Then that's where I'll start. <laughs> All right, so... <laughs> I do... I do kind of agree with what Mavic said earlier. Mavic had said something about how the side quests feel like out of character for Clive. And I said like, no, no, it makes sense. They set him up in the beginning as being someone that helps out and truly cares about people. But, uh, you know, this quest, it's like, okay, this guy isn't a bearer. He isn't helping bearers. He's just some guy running a bakery <laughs> in Dalmechia. Not even our, not even Rosaria, like just some random Dalmechian running a bakery. And it's not even like a life or death situation. It's just like, hey, my, my dude's missing. And Clive's going to stop everything to help him. A little sus. <laughs> oh, where's all the men Made from the stoutest stoneware. 
Like, Clive seems like the type of person that, even if he was in the depths of the enemy's territory, if it meant life and death, he would help someone. You know what I mean? Like, if we were in the middle of the Empire and some woman was like, please, my son, he he ran away and he might, I, you know, I have to, we have to save him and he would help, you know? But to help some random baker in a kingdom that's not even his, just because... Well, I gotta watch the bakery, but my dude is out doing something. Little sus. But hey, they had to come up with something, right? Not every side quest can be a banger. Sometimes you gotta help the donuts. Of course. To say not every side quest in this game has been a banger is a bit of an understatement. So I'm still on the side of the writing for the side quest has been very good. It's just everything else with the side quests. At least guy at least this guy was actually quite a bit far away. He wasn't like down the road. Actually took me a minute to get here. Excuse me. What do you want? The baker sent me to find you. I am a sorry, selfish sod, aren't I? I'm certainly not a baker. Master must rue the day he took me in. Nice ask, I was the sight of the fang used to calm my nerves. But now look at her. I take it you miss the mother crystal. Oh, I hated her, but she was all I knew. Worked her minds for years. And when she shattered, part of me shattered with her. I had to trade my pickaxe for a rolling pin, but I'm no good at baking. Every loaf I touch collapses. My bread's as hollow as I am. She was the only thing that could fill the hole inside me. Oh, I loved her, damn it. But now she's gone. She's never coming back. What am I supposed to do? He hated her, but he loved her. How does a shell of a man learn to live again? Express yourself. Remember the good times. Focus on your work. Express yourself. Perhaps you could express yourself in your work. If you miss the fang... Maybe you could recapture it somehow. Did you notice? Capture it. Did you notice the typo? There was a typo in the subtitles. I'm a baker, not a. Hate to no. see it. You might just be right. What a fool I've been! I have to get back to the bakery right away. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. You've opened my eyes. My eyes. My special eyes. Wait. Suppose he won't be needing an escort then. I do. I really love this. Um, this overarching theme of... We have to get rid of this thing that gives everyone solace, but at the same time is destroying the planet. It's, I don't know, like a good metaphor, almost like it's almost like smoking, you know, like how the only thing you want when you're trying to quit smoking is a cigarette. You know, it's like, you know, it's killing you, but it's the thing that also gives you relief right it's like the same way it's like the same way with 
the crystals where it's like everyone knows that it's killing it, the world but it's also the only thing that takes their mind off the world dying they're the only thing that gives them the sustenance they need for whatever for electricity for food for everything like it's it's both giving them life and giving them death yeah maybe a better example like a toxic electric power plant or something but to a exaggerated degree but it's this cool like theme that they're kind of rolling out and, and this this side quest adds to that a bit see even with the stupid bakery side quest they were able to at least connect it to the main story i just think that the the start of the side quest didn't make sense like why would he even accept the side quest but now that we're here they're actually making it work but yeah, I like this underlying theme of we have to get rid of what makes us comfortable in order to move forward. There was that whole speech that Clive gave earlier where he was like, in order to fix the world, we first have to break it or we have to get rid of that that gives everyone hope in order to finally move past and actually change the world. Like that, that speech was really good, but this kind of connects to that. Here's the, uh... Here's the typo. Perhaps you could express yourself in your work if you miss the fang. Maybe could you recapture it somehow? Instead of, you could. He says you could here. You miss the fang. Maybe you could recapture it somehow. But it says could you. Zero out of ten game. I want a refund. <laughs> Off to GameStop. Get my refund. Recall time. My carpet. Take a sniff, good sir. Ah, there you are. The man who lit a fire under my wayward apprentice. <laughs> Though I worry you might have stoked the flames a little too high. He damn near ran me down trying to get to my oven. Master, it's ready. Behold the Drake's Balm. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. That's pretty dope. I was thinking, like, how is he gonna recreate the fang in a pastry? He's probably just going to make something that tastes good and we're just going to pretend like he got it from the fang. But that actually looks like the fang. Like, that's really cool. A truly unique creation. I dare say it is. <laughs> just look at it. A perfect likeness of the fang herself. Her steeple peaks, I'm impressed. Her fulsome spurs. Her inviting hollow. True, my loaves collapse more often than not, but what's the fang without her crater? <laughs> what? No fang at all. And look, inside, she's filled to bursting with a bounty of beautiful crystals. Salt crystals! Master, I have found my purpose. I must use my work here to preserve I'll take three, please. the memory of the fang. Well, if it tastes half as unique as it looks, I'd certainly say you're on to something. <laughs> Not only is my apprentice back, but he's finally pulling his weight. With any luck, I might even have a new delicacy on my hands. I don't know how you did it, but you have my thanks. Use your loaf. Thanks for the goblin coin. Now. I'm telling yeah, you, I mean, it's true. I don't know about fun. I just ran to one place and then ran to the other place, but 
The writing was good. Again, the writing, always good. The gameplay is just walking, unfortunately. Uh, this is the enhancer. to visit Sid, and I thought you might like to come with me. Sorry, I'm too busy for all that right now. I've got to get this thermal displacement stack sorted. Thermal... <laughs> displacement stack. Here. And uh, this is for... Only the fastest, finest ship the world has ever seen. The Enterprise. Epic. Me and my dad designed it together. Where other vessels rely on the fickle winds to drive them through the water, ours is fitted with mithril engines. And those things have got more push than a behemoth in a bad mood, and more heat than all the hells put together. Which is where the stack comes in. I may have already talked some tight-lipped shipwrights into putting the hull together for me in a little dockyard in Canva. But the stack's a bit more involved, so I'm building it here. Thing is, it's so involved that I'm running behind and it's starting to hold things up over at the shipyard. I'll come and see my dad, though, when I'm done. Whenever that is. <sighs> is there anything I can do to help? Good old Clive. I were hoping you'd say that. First things first, I need some parts making. The sack will be made up of three major components. There's the plate in, here, that channels hot vapors away from the engine. The helm over the top, that disperses all that heat into the air. And the shield in around the sides, that stops the rest of the ship from going up in flames. That's a good thing. A full suit of armor then. Probably best to take it one piece at a time. Then you'll need to start with the plate in. Everything else fits onto it. I've got the designs and the list of materials here. Show these to Blackthorn. He'll know what to do. I can't make it not tell of them. Luckily, you don't need to. I love that instead of just saying like, up, oh, I'm busy, I gotta do this. She gave like a legitimate reason. She wasn't just like, oh, I'm busy, I gotta finish this. She was like, I have them building it in the shipyard and they're waiting on me because I had to make this here because it was too complicated. Like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Actually gave me like a good reasoning. I thought they were gonna go with the, she actually doesn't wanna see him cause she's too sad about it route. But then when she gave me that explanation, I was like, oh, <laughs> logic. I appreciate that they go the extra mile for the logic instead of just saying, eh, I'm busy doing this thing. Oh yes, please tell me, tell me the hull is made out of a thousand sharp fangs. <laughs> Blackthorn, can I ask a favor? Hell with it. It's for mid. This is my last chance to say I'm otherwise engaged. I'd spare myself the arse sake. Go on then. What is it this time? She said you would know. Here. Still don't think that's really necessary to do every time, but whatever. Krieger's Tate. What'd you say to me? Well, I don't know what the hell you'd want this for, but I can make it. Won't be easy though. And I'll need help. Get Gavin Otto in here, will you? All right.
So Liz roped us all in here again, has she? Typical. Still, if that's what it takes to get her to visit Sid's grave, I'll do what I can. And, uh, what is it we need to do, exactly? Take a look at this. It's this plating. The usual saw grade steel won't work. We need something that can get very hot, very fast, and still keep its shape. That means an alloy. Something that won't break or buckle at the temperatures she's talking about. Which is where you lot come in. I need materials, and I've got my work cut out already. You'll have to fetch them. Now, there's a special kind of sand I'm after that you can only find out in the Valkroy. Stardust, they call it. As for the rest of the stuff, my usual supply should have it in stock. It just needs buying and bringing back here. Well, we'll get it done quicker if we split up. One of us should probably give you an hand coat in the sand. And the other can go and get the rest from this supplier. Right then. Well, make your minds up who's going where, we can get this over with. Up to you who you take to the desert. I mean, Gav's giving the fight, but he don't have my winning personality. <laughs> ah, don't listen to him. You'll be in the lowest of low company with either of us. True. Man, the characters are just so lovable. It just warms my heart to talk to these characters. And there's so many, like, different times where they bend over backwards for people, like... It just reminds me of some other games I've played where it feels like everyone's a jerk, you know? And not on purpose, but just kind of... They never go the extra mile for anyone that they should be, you know? that They're just kind of all selfish, like... That's the exact opposite of how I feel in this game. Every character is the opposite of selfish. They're always whatever I can do to make this happen for this person. Like, they're willing to do all this just so Mid will visit Sid's grave, which is like such a small thing, but... Yeah, and it, it helps to build this whole community out to where we care about it. And it was, it was... It's good now, but it was even better back when Clive wasn't sold on the idea. So like, at the beginning when Clive was like, I'm not with you guys. You're just a means to an end. And then we started seeing how much everyone cared for each other. That's what brought Clive around, you know, and brought us around as well at the same time. Like, oh, I really like these guys, you know. It was cool that we got to experience it in the same way he did. Anyways, I don't think anything unlocked, so we just keep going. You going after the Stardust then, are you? Which one of these two lucky souls is going with you? Uh, I'll pick Gav. Gav, you're with me. All right, then. So, uh, where do we find this stardust stuff? There's a river that runs through the southern reaches of the Velcroy. It's the black sand that washes up on its banks that you're after. Southern reaches of the Velcroy, eh? That's down past Dallamil. I'll go and scout the place out. See about hiring us a wagon to bring the stuff back to. All right. I'll meet you by the river. <laughs> While you're off having a paddle, I'll pick up the rest of this stuff from Blackthorn Supply. Take care. You too, eh? Don't go letting him fleece ya. Fleece me? I like to see him dry. <laughs> In your own time. I really like this little decision. Like, it doesn't really affect anything. At least... I don't know at the moment if it affects anything, but it's a really nice little replayability factor. Like, oh, next time we could pick auto, you know, just something small to give you a little bit of value playing through again. It might actually end up having some huge ramifications, but for now, it just feels like oh, a nice little choice to give us something else to do next time. I like that.